Day One, The Conclusion of the Decameron. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio, translated by A. M. Rigg. Translated by M. Rigg. Day One, The Conclusion. As the young ladies and the three young men finished their story-telling, the sun was westering and the heat of the day in great measure abated, which their queen observing, debonnerly thus she spoke, Now, dear gossips, may a day of sovereignty draws to a close, and naught remains for me to do but to give you a new queen, by whom on the morrow our common life may be ordered as she may deem best, in a course of seemly pleasure, and though there seems to be still more interval between day and night, yet, as whoso does not in some degree anticipate the course of time, cannot well provide for the future, and in order that what the new queen shall decide to be meet for the morrow may be made ready beforehand, I decree that from this time forth the days begin at this hour. And so, in reverent submission to him in whom is the life of all beings, for our comfort and solace we commit the governance of our realm, for the morrow in the hands of Queen Philomena, most discreet of damsels. So saying she arose, took the laurel wreath from her brow, and with a gesture of reverence set it on the brow of Philomena, whom she then, and after her all the other ladies and the young men, saluted as queen, doing her due and graceful homage. Queen Philomena modestly blushed a little to find herself thus invested with the sovereignty, but, being put on her mettle by Pampinea's recent admonitions, she was minded not to seem awkward, and soon recovered her composure. She then began by confirming all the appointments made by Pampinea, and making all needful arrangements for the following morning and evening, which they were to pass where they then were whereupon she thus spoke. Dearest gossips, though, thanks rather to Pampinea's courtesy than to merit of mine, I am made queen of you all, yet I am not on that account minded to have respect merely to my own judgment in the governance of our life, but to unite your wisdom with mine, and that you may understand what I think of doing, and by consequence may be able to amplify or curtail it at your pleasure. I will in few words make known to you my purpose. The course observed by Pampinea to-day, if I have judged aright, seems to be alike commendable and delectable. Wherefore, until by lapse of time, or for some other cause, it grew tedious, I purpose not to alter it. So when we have arranged for what we have already taken in hand, we will go hence and enjoy a short walk. At sundown we will sup in the cool, and we will then sing a few songs, and otherwise divert ourselves, until it is time to go to sleep. Tomorrow we will rise in the cool of the morning, and after enjoying another walk, each at his or her sweet will, we will return, as to-day, and in due time break our fast, dance, sleep, and having risen, will her resume our story-telling, wherein, methinks, pleasure and profit unite in superabundant measure, True it is that Pampinea, by reason of her late election to the sovereignty, neglected one matter which I mean to introduce, to wit, the circumscription of the topic of our story-telling, and its preassignment that each may be able to premediate some apt story bearing upon the theme. And seeing that from the beginning of the world fortune has made men the sport of diverse accidents, and so it will continue until the end, the theme, so please you, shall in each case be the same, to wit, the fortune of such, as after diverse adventures, have at last attained a goal of unexpected felicity. The ladies and the young men alike commended the rules thus laid down, and agreed to follow it. Dioneo, however, when the rest had done speaking, said, Madame, as all the rest have said, so say I, briefly, that the rule prescribed by you is commendable and delectable. 
but of your especial grace I crave a favor, which, I trust, may be granted and continued to me, so long as our company shall endure, which favor is this, that I be not bound by the assigned theme, if I am not so minded, but that I have leave to choose such topic as best shall please me, and lest any suppose that I crave this grace as one that has not stories ready to hand, I am henceforth content that mine be always the last. The queen, knowing him to be a merry and facetious fellow, and feeling sure that he only craved this favor in order that, if the company were jaded, he might have an opportunity to recreate them by some amusing story, gladly, with the consent of the rest, granted his petition. She then rose, and attended by the rest, sauntered towards the stream, which, issuing clear as crystal from a neighboring hill, precipitated itself into a valley, shaded by trees close set amid living rock and fresh green herbage. Bare of foot and arm, they entered the stream, and rowing hither and thither amused themselves in diverse ways, till in due time they returned to the palace and gaily supped. Supper ended, the queen sent for instruments of music, and bade Lauretta lead a dance, while Emilia was to sing a song, accompanied by Dioneo on the lute. Accordingly, Lauretta led a dance, while Emilia, with passion, sang the following song. So fain I am of my own loveliness, I hope, nor think not e'er, the way to feel of other amorousness. When in the mirror I my face behold, that see I there which doth my mind content, nor any present hap or memory old may me deprive of such sweet ravishment. Where else, then, should I find such blandishment of sight and sense, that e'er my heart should know another amorousness? Nor need I fear lest the fair thing retreat, when fain I am my solace to renew. Rather, I know, twill me advance to meet, to pleasure me, and show so sweet a view, that speech or thought of none its semblance true, paint, or conceive may ever, unless he burn with even such amorousness. Thereon, as more intent I gaze, the fire waxes within me hourly more and more, myself I yield thereto, myself entire, and foretaste have of what it hath in store, and hope of greater joyance than before nay such as ne'er none knew for ne'er was felt such amorousness this ballad to which all heartily responded albeit its words furnished much matter of thought to some was followed by some other dances and part of the brief night being thus spent the queen proclaimed the first day ended and bade light the torches that all might go to rest until the following morning and so seeking their several chambers to rest they went. End of day one conclusion.